Imagine being one of the last men on earth and having to make babies with every woman you meet. Sounds like a dream, right? Well, not for Rito, a young man who just wanted to be with his childhood crush Alyssa. But fate had other plans for him. Rito lived in Tokyo in 2040, a time when science and technology had made life easy and comfortable for humans. He had a secret. He had multiple sclerosis, a disease that could only be cured by freezing him for five years. He decided to confess his love to Alyssa before going into cold sleep hoping she would wait for him. But Alyssa was not impressed by his weak confession. She wanted him to be more assertive and passionate. She also knew that another man, Mana, had feelings for her. She felt confused and hurt by Rito's lack of confidence and ran away from him. Rito was heartbroken, but he had no choice but to go to the hospital with his sister Maharu and his brother Ryo. He set up his own cryogenic sleep chamber and said goodbye to them. At the last moment, Alyssa showed up and apologized to him. She promised to wait for him and took his pendant as a token of their love. Rito fell asleep with a smile on his face, hearing Alyssa's sweet words. Little did he know that the world he would wake up to would be very different. Five years later, Rito was awakened by a woman who looked exactly like Alyssa, but acted cold and distant. She told him that his treatment was successful and that he was healthy again. Then she took him to a futuristic car. She introduces herself as Mira, a woman that claims to be his personal assistant and was willing to do anything he wanted. She told him that she would handle all his communication with the outside world and that he should trust her completely. Rita was confused by her words and asked her what was going on. Mira then dropped a bombshell on him. While he was frozen for five years, a deadly virus called the MK virus had wiped out half of the world's population. The virus was airborne, incurable, and only targeted men. Rito couldn't believe his ears and ran out of the car to see for himself. He saw a city that looked like a war zone, with crumbling buildings. He also noticed that there were no men around, only women, and they all stared at him like he was an alien. Mira caught up with him and explained that MK stood for male killer, and that 99% of men had died from it. The remaining 1% were put into cold sleep until a cure was found. Rito was shocked to learn that he was one of the five men in the world who were immune to the virus. He didn't know why, but he had something to do. Mira then told him something that made his jaw drop. He had to impregnate as many women as possible to save humanity. She took him to a place called the Mating Center, where he watched a movie that told him more about the new world. He learned that the world was ruled by an organization called United Women or UWU for short. They had stopped all wars and conflicts and focused on finding a vaccine for the MK virus. Rito was shocked and confused by all this. He didn't want to have babies with strangers. He wanted to go back to his normal life and be with his crush Alyssa. He asked Mira if there was another way to save humanity. Mira said no. She said they tried other methods before, but they didn't work. Only natural pregnancy could produce healthy boys who were immune to the virus. Rito was not convinced. He asked Mira to take him home, but she refused. She said his safety was more important than anything else. She gave him a tablet with pictures of women he could choose from, but he rejected it. He said he didn't want to treat women like objects. Suddenly, Rito's sister Maharu came in. She was happy to see him after so long. She showed him that their brother Rai was still alive in cold sleep. Rito asked her what happened to Alyssa. Maharu said she didn't know. She said Alyssa disappeared three years ago. Later, Mira reported to her bosses that Rito didn't want to cooperate. They told her to do whatever it took to make him change his mind. That night, Mira came into Rito's room wearing a nightgown. She took it off and said she wanted to sleep with him. But Rito pushed her away. He said he didn't want to do that. He said he felt sorry for all the people who were suffering because of the virus, but he couldn't betray his feelings for Alyssa. Mira left him alone, feeling sad and frustrated. Rito couldn't get Alyssa out of his mind. He remembered giving her a special pendant that had a secret transmitter inside. And guess what? It was still sending signals, making him believe that she might still be alive. The next day, Mira had a surprise for Rito. She led him into a room filled with eager women who were all vying for his attention. Their goal, to sleep with him and have his children. Mira explained that in this world, there were only five men for every five billion women. But Rito wasn't too thrilled about being treated like a piece of livestock. He put his foot down and declared, I am not some piece of meat. Mira realized her mistake and apologized. But she reminded him of the urgency to procreate and populate the world with his children. She also dropped a bombshell. Those men in cold sleep, including Rito's older brother, would succumb to the disease within a year. Cold sleep could only delay the inevitable. Deep in thought, Rito made a decision. He asked Mira for one month to find Alyssa because he wanted to have children with her and her alone. Mira agreed to his request. The next day, another survivor named Kyuji was living the high life. 
While watching a movie, he enjoyed a massage from two beautiful women. And guess what? His attendant brought the actress he admired from the movie to him. In the dining room, Mira approached Rito with a proposition. She would assign a bodyguard and a nurse to him for protection. And to test his resolve, she insisted that he had to share a bed with them. It was a test of his self-control to resist any temptations. As Rito made his way back to his room, he encountered Kyuji, who turned out to be number one. They introduced themselves and struck up a friendly conversation. Kyuji encouraged Rito to enjoy the wild ride of this amazing world they found themselves in. Later, as Rito was taking a refreshing shower, the light suddenly went out. And to his surprise, a drunk woman joined him. It was Akane, his personal nurse. Overwhelmed by the unexpected situation, Rito couldn't handle it and fainted. Rito had a rough night. He had to share his bed with Akane, his nurse, and Sui, his bodyguard. They were both cute, but he wasn't interested in them. He only had eyes for Alyssa, his long-lost love. The next morning, Rito was exhausted. He wanted to go to the animal lab where Alyssa used to work. He hoped to find some clues about her disappearance. He went there with Mira, Akane, and Sui. But things went wrong when a bear escaped from its cage and attacked them. Rito saved Sui from the bear, but got hurt in the process. Then something weird happened. Sui turned into a ninja and kicked the bear's butt. Then she went back to normal and apologized to Rito. Rito was confused, but he didn't have time to ask questions. He went to Alyssa's lab and found out that someone had stolen all her research data. He saw a picture of Alyssa with her dog Gyro and remembered their childhood dream. They both wanted to be doctors and cure Gyro's disease. Rito felt a surge of determination. He decided that he would find a cure for the MK virus that killed most of the men in the world. He thought that would be more useful than having babies with random women. Rito had a bold idea. He decided to go on TV and tell the world that he was a man who was immune to the MK virus. He also said that he wanted to wake up the other men who were in cold sleep and find a cure for the virus. His sister Maharu was not happy with his decision. She thought he was putting himself in danger by exposing himself to the public. But Rito thought it was worth it. He wanted to have more freedom and more allies. He also found a clue about Alyssa's whereabouts. He discovered a smart ring hidden inside a plushie that belonged to her. He played a message that she had recorded for him. She said that she had learned that the MK virus was not natural, but artificial. She said she didn't trust anyone but him. Rito felt hopeful and curious. He wanted to know more about Alyssa's discovery and why she disappeared. He went for a walk with Mira and told her that she looked like Alyssa. He also apologized for being rude to her before. Mira smiled and said he was a nice guy. Mira had feelings for Rito, but she knew he loved Alyssa. She wondered if she could ever win his heart. She compared herself to Alyssa in the shower and felt insecure. Meanwhile, in the United Women's headquarters in Japan, some directors were talking about Rito's announcement. They thought that the global headquarters would try to stop him from finding a cure. They also said that they were happy with Kyuji's performance and that they wanted to wake up another man soon. In 2040, a boy named Shouta was being bullied by some classmates in the school bathroom. They hated him because he saw them hurting his only friend. His friend then avoided him because he was afraid of the bullies. Shouta felt angry and lonely. He hated everyone in his class for not helping him. Shouta was a boy who had a hard life. He was bullied by his classmates and ignored by everyone. The only person who cared about him was his music teacher Yuzu, who was kind and beautiful. She always encouraged him and told him he was smart and strong. But Shouta had a secret. He had a disease called cellular sclerosis that could only be cured by freezing him for five years. He decided to go to the hospital and get frozen, hoping that things would get better when he woke up. He didn't know that while he was asleep, a virus called the MK virus had killed most of the men in the world and changed everything. Five years later, Shouta was awakened by a bubbly blonde woman named Karen. She said she was his assistant and that she would make his life fun and exciting. She told him that he had to go back to school and that he was the only man who was immune to the virus. Shouta was confused and scared, but he followed Karen to his new room in a dorm. He met his new classmates, who were all girls. They were all curious and friendly to him, unlike his old classmates who hated him. Shouta felt happy and relieved. He thought he could finally enjoy his school life and forget his past. He also met his old music teacher Yuzu who was still kind and beautiful. She was happy to see him too. Karen suggested that Yuzu should give Shouta a reward for being brave and strong. Yuzu blushed and asked Shouta to come to her room at night. Shouta was having the time of his life. He was going to school with a bunch of girls who liked him. He was also dating his music teacher Yuzu, who was sweet and hot. But Shouta didn't know that he was part of a secret experiment. He was one of the five men who were immune to the MK virus that killed most of the men in the world. 
he was also being manipulated by Karen, his assistant, who wanted him to have babies with as many girls as possible. Karen tried to introduce Shouta to the girls in his class and encourage him to get closer to them. She also made him join the gym class and the pool class, where he could see the girls in their sporty outfits and swimsuits. Shouta was shy and nervous, but he couldn't help but admire the girls. He especially liked Akira, a sporty girl who played volleyball. He also felt sorry for Shifu, a short girl who tried to impress him but failed miserably. Shouta also enjoyed playing piano in the music room with Yuzu. He felt a strong connection with her and loved her very much. Shouta thought he was living in a dream. He didn't know that there were other men like him in the world. Shouta was missing Yuzu, his music teacher and girlfriend. He wanted to see her, but she said she was busy. He didn't know what to do. Then he got a surprise visitor. It was Natsu, a girl from his class. She said she had won a swimming contest and earned the right to stay in his room for a week. Shouta was shocked and confused, but he couldn't say no. The next morning, Shouta woke up next to Natsu. He felt awkward and nervous. He tried to get ready for school, but Natsu asked him for a favor. Shouta thought about Yuzu and wished he was with her. He called Yuzu after school and asked her to meet him, but she said no again. She also said he should get along with other girls too. She said the other girls would be jealous of her if he only paid attention to her. Shouta felt sad and lonely. He went back to his room with Natsu. He tried to sleep, but he couldn't stop thinking about Yuzu and Natsu. Then Natsu got up and asked him another favor. She said she was used to sleeping with someone and couldn't sleep alone. Shouta felt sorry for her again and let her join him. Then Natsu told him something that surprised him. She said she loved him since the first time she saw him. She said she was happy that the virus happened because it gave her a chance to be with him. Rita was a celebrity. He had gone on TV and told the world that he was a man who was immune to the MK virus. He also said he wanted to find a cure for the virus and wake up the other men who were in cold sleep. He became a star overnight. A TV show followed his daily life and showed how he interacted with women. Women who wanted to have his babies lined up outside the mating center every day. Rito felt overwhelmed by all the attention. Mira, his assistant, was worried about him. She also worried about his sister Maharu, who spent a lot of time in the refugee area. She hoped that they wouldn't find out that Rito was her brother. The next day, Shouta woke up with Natsu, a girl from his class. Natsu was sad that she had to leave his room in a week. Shouta felt sorry for her. He also felt sorry for Yuzu, his music teacher and girlfriend. He had cheated on her with Natsu and hurt her feelings. He went to see her in the music room and tried to apologize. But Yuzu cried and ran away from him. Shouta felt guilty and confused. He met Karen, his assistant, and told her that he didn't like what they were doing to him and the girls. He said they were using them as tools for their experiment. Karen interrupted him and took him back to the classroom. She told him in front of all the girls that he was there for one reason only, to have children with as many girls as possible to save humanity. She said all the girls were interested in him and willing to do it. She said he had no choice. Shouta was shocked and scared. He didn't know what to do. Meanwhile, in the United Women's headquarters in Japan, some directors decided to fire Mira as Rito's assistant. They said she had failed to make him procreate with any women. They said they needed someone else to do it. Rito was frustrated. He was trying to find a vaccine for the MK virus, but he had no luck. He was also surprised by a woman who walked into his room half-dressed. She was in a daze and tripped over him. But when she saw he was a man, she freaked out and ran away. Rito didn't know what was going on. He soon found out that Mira, his assistant, had been fired. She had been replaced by two other women, Rhea and Maria. Rhea was rude and bossy. She said she would take care of his needs. But she also said she would limit his freedom if he didn't have babies with anyone. Maria was shy and quiet. She said she would help him with his research. Rito was sad and angry. He liked Mira and wanted her to stay. He didn't like Rhea and wanted her to go away. Rhea met Mira and insulted her. She said Rito was a loser who used women as tools. Mira defended him and left. The next day, Rito went to Kaiman City with Maria, Rhea, Akane, and Sui. Maria said they were going to meet someone important for the research of the MK virus. Rito was curious and excited. He asked her if the virus could be man-made. They stayed at a hot spring resort and enjoyed the food and the baths. They went to see Tanaguchi, a woman whose husband was the first victim of the virus in Japan. But she was angry and bitter. She told them to go away. Maria said they needed Tanaguchi's help. She said the virus had appeared in different places at the same time and that Tanaguchi knew something about her husband's activities before he got sick. They tried to talk to Tanaguchi again, but she still refused to cooperate. She said Rito should focus on having babies instead of finding a cure. Rhea said Rito hadn't had babies with anyone yet. 
Taniguchi was surprised. She told everyone to leave except Rito. She asked him why he wasn't interested in any girls. Rito said he loved only one girl, Alyssa. The last number of your like is who powers you get. Comment who you got. Don't forget to subscribe for more anime recaps.